joined now by Graham Whitson from Greater Manchester Poverty Action. Uh, good morning to you. Morning, a collective morning, piece there, touching on those who haven't been able to access this £400 that we were all promised. It's not just care homes, it's not just caravan parks, but people on prepayment meters, for example, to whom that £400 makes a huge difference. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a real gap, isn't it? You know, people have been, the rest of the country, people have been receiving that extra support for energy bills since October time. We've been left with a big group of the population, a big group of people living in vases, living in park homes, who haven't been getting that support. We shouldn't have had to have waited. Those people shouldn't have had to have waited until the end of February before this issue got, got resolved. You know, over those months, many of those people have been struggling. It's been cold. We've been going through the winter period. People will have been going into debt just to meet their energy costs or doing other things, making other sacrifices just to get by. And it's, it's absolutely wrong that those people have had to wait as long as they have. And some people will say 66 quid a month doesn't make a difference. Talk to us about some of the people for whom that is a massive difference. It really does make a difference. I mean, you know, we know that household finances are really tight anyway. I mean, we, you know, we've been talking about the cost of living crisis, energy bills going up, food prices going up over the last year. We've all seen that. We've all experienced it. But it is in the context of many years where people's living standards have been at best stagnating, their wages have been at best stagnating, working age benefits have really been cut back over the last 10 years. So it's not like we've gone into this cost of living crisis after a period of the good times where people have been able to save money, build up a bit of a, a nest egg to dip into now when costs are going up. People are already really struggling financially. You know, we've been talking for years at Greater Manchester Poverty Action about people making choices between heating or eating. Well, actually, for some of the families we support, they haven't even got that choice anymore. And just give us an idea about the kind of numbers that you, of people that are turning to you for help that you're you're seeing. Yeah, I mean, what we're seeing across Greater Manchester. I mean, there's other organisations like Citizen Advice. We've got food banks across Greater Manchester. Organisations like ours. More and more people are just saying we haven't got enough money to make ends meet, people are really struggling financially. And we know that you know poverty is a, a huge problem across the whole of the UK. People are struggling in communities across the country. And one of the issues I think is that the cost of living crisis has really compounded the financial challenges that people are already experiencing. I mean, the government says that the, the, the energy bill support scheme has, has helped out 27 million households um, through, through automatically through the electricity supply. So what, what has been done as, as Nina said, it has helped, hasn't it, to some extent? Yeah, I mean, it's helped to some extent, but I think we've got it also illustrates actually the problem we've got in this country. You know, the safety net is broken in this country. There's too many people living below the poverty line, there's too many people struggling financially. Actually, when living costs do go up, people should be able to absorb that. You know, we should live in a society, a country where people have got enough money to make ends meet week in, week out, year in, year out, and that just isn't the case. And then when we face a sudden shock like this, energy bills are soaring, food prices are soaring, we shouldn't be surprised actually that so many people are struggling because we don't do enough to support people in this country. Poverty isn't just a here and now problem, it's been a real issue in this country for many, many years, and it's been compounded now by this cost of living crisis. And we're in the situation at the moment where we have been sort of artificially protected by the energy price cap. We're not entirely sure what the spring will bring when the current scheme comes to an end. No, I mean, I think it's, and I think it's really important for people to understand as well. So wholesale, people will have seen in the news that wholesale prices for energy are coming down. But as customers, as residents in the country, we won't see the benefit of that, it reduces benefit it, until later in the year. So our prices as customers, as consumers, won't go down until later in the year and they are likely to go up further in the spring period so people need to be really aware of that people might be thinking well we're coming out of the winter we're seeing wholesale prices come down things will get better actually there's still another pinch point for people coming down the line in the spring people's energy bills are going to go up further before they come down are you speaking to people um and, and they're saying to you you touched on it earlier you said even before this happened it was eating or heating we hear a lot from some people who said, I have never before found myself in this situation. We're both working, we've been comfortable, we've gone on holiday every year, we've had two cars in the drive, and all of a sudden we have nothing. Yeah, I mean, this is issues that we talk about, yeah, heating or eating, making that choice. But I think we've got to be realistic here. We speak to people where their outgoings and their everyday outgoings, the basics, the rent, the energy bills, the food, exceed what they've got coming into the household. So people just don't have enough money to make ends meet. And the real issue and what we're seeing at the moment is a big spike in people who are going into debt to meet everyday for living costs time. for the first time yeah. often. And so one of the things that we really need to understand is that for people 
you know, you might be borrowing 200, 300 pounds in relatively small amounts of money to tide yourself over one month. To but then having the means to pay that back is going to be yeah. difficult. But how do you pay that back? And if you're having to go to a, you know, a high interest lender, so some people go to an illegal lender, that 200, 300 pounds can really spiral and become, become, can become a real problem for people. Thank you very much for coming in, Graham. Thank you. We're grateful. Graham Whitten from, uh, Whitten from the Greater Manchester Poverty Action uh, Group. If you're looking for more information, support or advice, you can find it online at the BBC's Cost of Living webpage. Just go online and search for BBC Cost.